Howdy folks. So I've been accused of not talking about computers enough on this channel. Mostly I do electronics just because it makes uh, you know the whole YouTube filming and stuff easier. But uh, anyway, I thought I might as well try a new format of video and I'll talk about something computery because why not? It's something that's relevant to what I'm doing. Uh, I've been working with ZFS uh, lately, uh, trying to prepare for using it in an embedded system deployment I'm doing at work. I'm using it for firmware updates. It's going to be kind of interesting. And uh, so once that's squared away, hopefully within the next couple months, uh, and if it works out, I'll make a video on uh, how I did it because I think it's uh, kind of cool. But anyway, uh, it's not about this video is not about this, that. This video is actually about ZFS on 32-bit systems. Now you've probably heard that uh, ZFS doesn't work uh, or isn't stable on a 32-bit operating system, but it works fine on 64-bit. And the reason for that is not entirely obvious. It's not what you might think it is. And I thought I might as well go over that because uh, it was something that I ran into on the weekend when I was trying out ZFS on a little ARM system that I had uh, laying around. I just wanted to, it had, a, it had, it had SATA on this uh, system on a chip, so I decided I might as well try and compile ZFS for it and just see what happens because um, it was a, a lazy Sunday. I didn't really want to do anything else. and. Uh, of course, it turns out it wasn't stable, and uh, I thought I might as well uh, explain exactly why that is, and uh, hopefully uh, you'll learn something about uh, Linux kernel memory management. So ZFS was originally written for uh, Sun Solaris. Now, of course, Sun was bought by Oracle, so it's Oracle Solaris now. But uh, it was originally written for Solaris, uh, Open Solaris, and the code was ported to Linux, and in that port, of course, you have to sort of translate uh, the uh, syscalls and uh, the kernel function calls to work in Linux. Now, actually, as of right now, not all of those have been ported. On, uh, on Linux, there's actually a separate kernel module called the SPL, the Solaris Porting Layer, which is actually a software abstraction library that translates um, Solaris syscalls into Linux syscalls. So the, the ZFS on Linux code actually calls Solaris syscalls, which then get translated in the kernel to uh, li uh, Linux calls and then pass back up. So it's actually, um, that's one of the reasons why ZFS isn't super fast, um, because it has this, this abstraction layer. And there are plans to totally remove the SPL in the future, but until that happens, we're kind of stuck with it. The other thing uh, that was quite kind of unfortunate uh, was how the memory management had to be done in Linux uh, after the initial port. Of course, when you're porting software, generally you want to make it work first and then make it faster and proper later once you've got something that works. And that's exactly what ZFS on Linux is doing. They're slowly moving towards version 1.0, which is kind of the properly implemented ZFS. So um, the sort of the direct translation from the Solaris memory allocation to the Linux memory allocation uh, was kind of an improper one. So whenever, uh, I guess I should probably talk a little bit about memory allocation. So if we have uh, our, our, our system memory, and uh, I apologize for the drawing in advance because I don't usually draw and talk at the same time, so this might end, uh, might end badly. But if we have our address space, um, so I don't know, uh, address zero is up here and then uh, whatever our max address is down here, I don't really know what, how big this address space is. Basically, the, the Linux kernel will split this up uh, between uh, user space uh, addressing and uh, kernel addressing. So there, there's uh, basically uh, a kernel address space and a user space address space. So the applications that are running in user space uh, have this uh, address space for memory and uh, the kernel and all the kernel modules that run uh, at the higher privilege level have their own address space, which is usually at high memory. Now I'm not going to bother to talk about user space memory because we don't really care about user space. ZFS exists within the kernel, so we want to talk about kernel uh, memory space. Now when you're writing a kernel driver for Linux, uh, whenever you want to allocate memory, you call a function called uh, kmalloc. And uh, kmalloc will allocate a, a block of memory that is both physically and virtually contiguous in address space. That is the uh, very key notion about this. So if I have, uh, for example, if I have some physical memory, um, so this is, so these are actual, these are blocks of real memory. 
and you know their addresses, you know, zero, one, two, three, four, blah, blah, blah. If these are blocks of physical memory, the virtual pages that are given to that memory are mapped one to one in KMalloc. So if this so this would be zero, one, two, three, four, five. So they be they're mapped one to one. And uh, this is done so that when, primarily because when you're writing stuff in kernel space, generally you're going to end up, uh, you know, if you're allocating a buffer, generally you're going to have DMA controller that's going to read that memory. So uh, you, of course, the DMA controller requires that the memory be contiguous because you're going to tell the DMA to start at some point and simply copy from that point to some, you know, ending, uh, uh, copy some number of pages uh, to something and then stop. So, of course, you can't have any gaps in this, uh, or otherwise the DMA controller is not going to know what to do. And uh, this is also really fast to allocate, because if it's contiguous here, it's contiguous here, you can just, uh, you can allocate it very quickly, and there isn't really much translation that needs to happen between the virtual addresses, um, these, the virtual addresses, and the, uh, the physical addresses. It just works out really nicely. And uh, Kmalloc is basically advised for pretty much everything. Uh, however, there's a limitation with KMalloc and that you can only uh, allocate uh, relatively small chunks of memory. Uh, if memory serves me correctly, I think it's only about four megabytes is the maximum you can ask from KMalloc in one chunk. Uh, so if you need more than four megabytes of contiguous memory, um, you're going to have to come up with something else to do. Um, pretty much. I'm not going to go into any more specifics than that. And anyway, ZFS needs large, needs large, large, large amounts of memory. Um, so KMalloc doesn't really work well for it. And there is another function in the Linux kernel to allocate memory, and that is vmalloc. And uh, vmalloc is kind of discouraged. Okay, it's actually very discouraged to use this function. The, the difference between KMalloc and vmalloc is that vmalloc allocates memory that is contiguous in virtual address space but not contiguous in physical address space. So what that means is if we have our, uh, our, virtual, uh, our virtual address space here and our physical address space here, and we have some memory, of course the physical address space is going to be contiguous like this, and we have our, our pages here. And basically, the mapping is not one-to-one. -one. So they could be one-to-one, -one, or this could be mapped here, and then this could be mapped here, and then we could just totally skip this one, and this one could be mapped here, and this one could be mapped here. You kind of get the idea. It's all over the place. So when you, you, can, you, can, you can, of course, read memory uh, contiguously in virtual address space, but in physical address space, um, there's no direct mapping between these. And of course, this does not work with DMA. So you can't use vmalloc whenever you're using DMA. So basically, drivers very rarely use this. But ZFS is kind of, kind of uh, not really a driver. It's a file system. And uh, it doesn't need it to be contiguous. So it's OK with using vmalloc. Now, the problem with there's a couple problems with vmalloc. The first one is it's very slow um, because it has to do this, this um, translation between the two. It has to do this, this allocation. And uh, not only is allocating memory slow, but it actually slows down the system because this translation, of course, you have to keep a table which says, you know, this page in virtual address space maps to this page in physical address space. And that, that, uh, that table can be kept in a hardware cache, uh, usually in the MMU, the memory management unit, on the, uh, the CPU uh, called the TLB or the uh, translation look aside buffer. And uh, when you have large amounts of memory allocated with, with vmalloc and they've got all this crazy translation going on, there's a lot of entries in the TLB and it becomes really, really big. And the problem is once the TLB exceeds the size of the physical hardware cache in the MMU, it has to spill out and therefore you start thrashing entries into the TLB and it slows down the system. And the use of vmalloc is the second reason why ZFS is slower than it could be. I guess I should mention that. ZFS is not slow per se, it's just slower than it should be uh, or could be. 
Um, and of course, once ZFS is properly integrated into Linux, uh, it should be a hell of a lot faster than it is now. But anyway, this is the difference between Kmalloc and Vmalloc. ZFS uses Vmalloc because it needs bigger buffers, and um, it's just the way it was architected, pretty much. Uh, Solaris is very different, and this was the closest, really, in Linux uh, that they could have used. Now, both of these memory allocation functions, uh, of course, they have to pull from a heap of memory somewhere. And they pull from a pool of memory that is available to uh, the kernel that is part of this kernel address space. Now, this kernel address space is separate from user space. And there is, and it's basically, it's global. Uh, because whenever you have a user space program, every user space program has its own uh, virtual address space. So on a 32-bit system, every program has a four gigabyte virtual address space that is basically perfectly clean. Uh, it's like every, every program is kind of sandboxed um, from everything else. And, uh, and the, the kernel uses virtual memory to manage that. However, in the kernel, uh, all of the address space is global and it's shared between all the kernel modules. This is uh, because Linux is a monolithic kernel and uh, it's one of the one of the just the downsides you get with uh, the monolithic kernel. It can be good for some things. It can be bad for others. I'm not going to discuss. I'm not going to discuss all this. You know all the crap about how microkernels are the greatest thing ever and all that crap. I don't really care. But anyway, it's a global address space, and there is a, a finite amount of address space that exists. And this is the reason why ZFS does not work properly on 32-bit systems. On a 32-bit system, the amount of address space that vmalloc has to use is uh, 128 megabytes by default. So that is the maximum address space that uh, vmalloc can use by default. Now, there is a Linux command line parameter um, called, uh, called vmalloc. And you can actually set this equal to something like uh, 512, for example. Um, and this will actually, when Linux starts, it will allocate a, a larger amount of memory up to some maximum, which is usually a gigabyte. It's usually the maximum. Uh, some systems won't even boot beyond 512 megs. Uh, it just depends on how the kernel was compiled. But there is a maximum uh, amount of address space you can give to vmalloc. Now, the thing is, ZFS will run with 512 megabytes of memory. That's okay. At any moment in time, ZFS can operate with, uh, you know, five, 512 megabytes of memory or less um, allocated. That is, is possible. ZFS has gotten a lot better in its memory uh, management. So you might think that, oh, all I just have to do is just, you know, increase the amount of uh, address space here and, uh, you know, increase it to 512 megs or something like that, and ZFS should work fine in 32-bit but it doesn't. And the reason is because it's not actually the amount of physical memory available that matters. It's the address space that matters. You see, vmalloc is contiguous in virtual address space. And this is the big problem. This is kind of like uh, what happens, uh, this is kind of like fragmentation on a hard drive. You can think if we have, uh, if we have address space, uh, like, uh, let's just, Let's, okay, so let's say we have some address space, and I allocate a block of memory here to ZFS. Yeah, it, it allocates this block, and then it allocates another block here, and then it allocates a big block here, and then it allocates another block here. And the thing is, there are going to be gaps because you can't guarantee where uh, the blocks will get allocated and what their size is. And now you can kind of imagine, if, if we imagine this is what our address space looks like, you know, if this is, if this is 512 megs, um, you can see that we're not using 512 megs. We've got some free space these gaps in these gaps. But let's say that um, ZFS needs to allocate another block of this size right here. Well, there's no... Let's say this is big enough. There's no, even though we have the total amount of free memory, we cannot allocate a contiguous block uh, in this. We would have to somehow move stuff around to make space, and we can't really do that. So um, even though we have the memory available, we can't use it. 
And as a result, um, the allocation will fail. ZFS will try to allocate it. The kernel will say, no, I can't allocate you that memory. And then uh, the system hangs, deadlocks, crashes, whatever. Bad stuff happens. It's unstable. So it's not about the amount of physical memory. It's about the address space. Now, in 64-bit Linux, uh, we don't have this 128 megabytes anymore. Uh, on 64-bit Linux, we actually have, uh, by default, 34 terabytes of address space. Uh, yes, that's terabytes with a T. It's a lot of memory. And uh, even though you don't have this much RAM in your system, that's the amount of virtual address space. So even though you may only have uh, you know, four gigabytes or eight gigabytes of memory, the address space is so big that you are effectively never going to have uh, this problem. Because even though the physical memory uh, because remember, if this was physical memory, we'd be fine because we could just you know, map pages in here to um, uh, contiguously virtual address space. But because this is the virtual address space, uh, we can't do it. So in 64-bit Linux, even though let's say you only have four gigabytes of RAM uh, physically, when you uh, have, let's say, 34 terabytes of uh, virtual address space, you can allocate, just, everything is just a tiny chunk, and it'll allocate to you know, a whole bunch, of, you know, it doesn't matter how it's physically allocated in the, uh, the physical memory, because of course, it can be translated by the TLB, so it doesn't, it can be translated by uh, the, the, the uh, translation table in the MMU, it doesn't matter um, where it actually is in physical memory. As long as you can create a, a big enough contiguous block in virtual address space, and of course, you'll always be able to with that amount of uh, virtual memory, um, Effectively, you'll never run into the problems that you run into uh, in allocating memory in 32-bit. So this is the reason why ZFS doesn't work on 32-bit operating systems. It has nothing to do with the amount of memory the system can address in total, because of course you can run ZFS fine on a gigabyte of RAM. It's the fact that the address space is not large enough to avoid this kind of memory fragmentation. Uh, that occurs from allocating and deallocating or freeing memory uh, over and over again. And that's why it, you, can, you can compile ZFS for 32-bit, you can install it, you can run it, but as you copy data, as it runs, you will eventually run into this instability. Whether it happens in a few seconds or a few minutes, it will eventually happen uh, because uh, you're just going to get this kind of Swiss cheese effect uh, in the virtual address space. So anyway, Hopefully that was uh, interesting, and uh, hopefully I will. Uh, hopefully I'll get a chance to um, uh, do some cool stuff with ZFS uh, at work, and I'll, I'll I'll talk about it before the uh, uh, before the new year. Hopefully. So anyway, as always, thanks for watching.